Good morning. Happy New Year! Hey! Well, my name is Kim, if you don't know, and I'll be leading the service today. Um, have you packed all your Christmas decorations away? Yeah. Has your waistline expanded accordingly? And have we got New Year's resolutions to make? But the most important thing is we're here. We're here to celebrate the Lord, and the Lord God knows our hearts. So long as we're here and we're together with each other, whatever we have, we leave it at the door and we just come in here and we just praise and grow in his love. Amen. Also today is a, oh, I've got to pronounce it, epiphany, that's it. Epiphany, I've been trying to practice it and every time I say it, I say it wrong. So today is the Feast of Epiphany when we celebrate wise men from the East visiting the baby Jesus in Bethlehem, signifying the revelation of Christ to all the peoples of the world. So let's begin our opening greeting. We meet in the name of God, our Father and Creator of the universe, source of true humanity, Mother and Father of all. Amen. We meet in the name of Jesus, Word made flesh, Saviour of the fallen humanity, Lover of all. Amen. We meet in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord and Giver of life, Midwife of new humanity, Inspirer of all. Amen. Come then, eternal God. Be present here, befriend us here, renew us here. And I'm going to hand you over to our singing team. And uh, if you please stand if you can. Thank you. Loving Lord, we've just celebrated your birth. Thank you for that good news that you've given us. But we too also come here to worship you like those shepherds and those kings.
please be seated. And before the children go out, we'd just like to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the team that's going to be looking after these children this morning, Lord. We thank you for the time that they've given, Lord, to prepare the work for them. We thank you for our young people. They're the hope of our future, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray that they have a wonderful time. They come away with joy and laughter, learning about you this morning. Amen. Bye, Zee, bye. Oh, we've lost a pole. <laughs> we've got a time of confession. And I suppose it's a new year and we've got new resolutions that we make and uh, always not to be so quick to, to anger or quick to address someone thinking they've done it wrong. So, you know, it's like I was driving in my car the other day and someone pulled out in front of me. And of course, I think, what are they doing? And then I think, oh, you know. So we've all got to learn from our confessions, especially me. So um, if we can start with this, we all read it together. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Loving Father, we'll do it all together, sorry, let's keep going. Loving Father, we come to you to ask for forgiveness for our sins and help us to fix our eyes on Jesus and not be distracted by anything that gets in the way of following you. We ask this in the name of our Son, our Lord, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say this all together as well. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips have spoken, where our hearts are still troubled. Set us free from the past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. And I don't know if any of you can see, but at the back we've got our Lord Jesus opening his arms to us. And when we read the last bit, and it's, uh, um, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. I always look at Jesus and think, he's there, he's opening his arms to us. And it's just a wonderful thought, that race, he's, he welcome us, welcomes us. So uh, we're going to go for our next song. Thank you. God, in Epiphany we think of the amazing journey of those three kings, wise men, whatever label we're going to give them. An incredible journey. And they came with very rich gifts. How baffling must that have been for Mary and Joseph and those who were nearby. Did they understand what was to come? But those wise men, three kings, those people humbled themselves before you with their gifts, with their enormous journey, with their faithfulness. Lord God, we want to be here to worship you too in your stable, in your humble bed. So, loving Lord Jesus, here we are to worship. Please stand. Light of the world, you step down.
The reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. When they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Loving God, would you take familiar words and speak into them new things to us today or reminders of old things. Give us new hope and encouragement for the coming year as we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a very happy new year to you all. It's good to be back. It's good to see you. And we come to the start of a new year. And I wonder how much for you it feels like the same old, same old. And how sometimes we hear the same stories and we think, well, yeah, been there. Remember that one. Know all about it. And very often, that's the way things are, and we do know these stories, and God has spoken to us in the past, but I hope that there will be something fresh today. Some of the background to what we read. Herod the Great, who is the bad King Herod, somehow he gets a bit of a mixed press. Some of them say, well, he was good political ruler, or other things. In other ways, he was very cruel. He was half Jew and half Idumean. And through his friendship with one of the Roman emperors, Marcus Antonius, he'd been given the title King of the Jews around 40 BC. So for getting on for 40 years, Herod knows himself 
as king of the Jews. That matters to him. He's appointed by Rome and he's desperate to hold on to power. Herod dies in, about four, dies in 4 BC and then he's succeeded by his son Archelaus and then later on another son, Herod Antipas, who we hear of later in the story as well. So if he dies in 4 BC, how do we start um, AD when we do? Well, that's down to Dionysius the Small, who was um, a historian or guy in the sixth century, and he did his best guess at this, but he didn't have all the information that we have now. He didn't have information on Herod's death. So that's how we've got our dating. And then we hear and we read about these magi, these wise men who were most probably astrologers. And they came seeking and journeying. And what they did was they were stargazers. They were intrigued by what was going on and they wanted to find out more. They're looking for signs. They had been doing all sorts of investigations, looking, seeing what the planets do. And we can't or don't know, and we'll never know this side of heaven, exactly what the star was that God gave them. I have no problem at all in believing that as God can bring Jesus to birth for us, he's not gonna have a problem creating a star to help lead and guide some guys to go and find where the child is. But I also have no problem in thinking, well, God uses our intellect, our understanding, our seeking, because he does that for all of us. And we know that in 7 BC, there were three occurrences of the planets Jupiter and Saturn that had a conjunction. They were in May, October, and December. So if you are looking and don't know these things and you see to a bright star, well, there's something going on, particularly if you have an understanding of the planet Jupiter as being signifying royalty and the planet Saturn as having an understanding of to do being to do with the Jewish people. So for them in their understanding, there is something around these three conjunctions which God may have used to bring them or he may have brought a star along as well. We don't know. But these three magi, well, these magi, we don't know how many of them there are, decide that they're going to make a journey. And they decide that what they're going to look for and what they think that these sign, this sign is about is signifying the king of the Jews has come. We don't know the number that there were. We know that there were three gifts. I expect, although it's not written down, that there would have been several people traveling with them. These guys must have had a fair amount of money to be able to go and say, well, we're gonna take time off. We don't know how long it's gonna take us. Not quite sure how long we're gonna, uh, where we're going, but we're going to travel. I would expect that they would have had some other people with them to help them, maybe to help with the cooking, help with the camels, if that's what we think they probably came on, help with the washing. So I expect there was a group that traveled. Something prompted them and drew them. And they decided together that it was worth investigating. We know that people do all sorts of what I think are crazy things, of adventures around the world, um, sailing around the world, whatever. We will all have done different things that for us are an adventure. My adventures will probably be tame in comparison with yours. But these guys decided that they were going to go 
and find out. And so we are all set for the story, or halfway through. In Matthew, forget what we know about Luke's account of the shepherds of traveling to Bethlehem. In Matthew, we hear after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the one who's been born King of the Jews? First thing we hear, the one born King of the Jews is not being announced to the Jews. It's being announced to those who are a long way away, who are investigating and wondering. And I wonder, for each of us, who do we think God meets with and how? It would have been easy for God to say, well, I'm going to reveal to you guys in Jerusalem, to the Sanhedrin, that the one you want to see is just down the road. All your prophecies had come true in this child here. But God says, they will find out in their own way, but Jesus has come for everyone. On that journey, I wonder what they saw. I wonder what they were intrigued with. I wonder how they engaged with looking and following the star. I wonder what the conversations were. I wonder what the points were where they thought, shall we turn back or shall we keep going? God met them, whether they were aware of it or not, and he led them and he guided them through their own intrigue, through their own questioning, through their own inquiries. And then God meets them again and speaks to them again in a different way, through a dream, by saying, no, don't go back the way you came. And I wonder whether there are people that we know where we think, well, God hasn't spoken to them yet. I wonder, will he ever get through, or shall I just give up on them? Or places where we think people have heard one thing and they've turned away and said, no, I've been there, investigated, but God's not real. Let's pray that God will find a new way to speak to them, a new way to intrigue them, a new way just to knock on the door and open them again or open ourselves again to discover he really is the king. And let's remember too that those wise people, as they were traveling, were traveling with God. God was with them before they'd met Jesus, before they'd bowed down and worshiped. On that journey, God was with them. On our journeys, on the journeys we are praying for, for those who don't yet know him, let's remember God is walking with them. God knows them, God loves them. God is at work, though we may not see it. Let's pray this day, this week, this month, this year, that God will be at work and that those we pray for and those we may not expect will be opened to him. And then let's remember, too, that God isn't always comfortable. What God does isn't always what people want to hear and see. The Magi come and say, where is the one born king of the Jews? Coming up to Herod and saying, hey, king of the Jews, where's the one born to be king of the Jews? It's not going to go down very well. Like going up to King Charles and say, excuse me, sir, um, where's the new king born? 
And I wonder what the Jews were thinking when they were asked, well, where is the one who was born king? Where is he going to be born? Well, they go away and they look and they see. And then Herod takes them away secretly and tells these wise men where to go. But what about that group of priests and intelligent theologians? Did they just not want to hear what was going on? I don't expect you could really hide the fact that a group of foreigners have turned up unusually, unexpectedly, and are having an audience with Herod. And then we're getting these questions, what's going on? Where will the king be born? It would not have been popular. Jerusalem would have been troubled because they knew what this king of the Jews, Herod, was like. There are times when we need God's wisdom about when to challenge authority. There are times when we need his strength to do so, but it's his wisdom that we need. And then we come, and the wise men arrive, and the first thing they do is not say, we are great, we've got great things to give you. They bow down and they worship. That is awesome that these guys who've been traveling all this way, looking, come and recognize in a baby the least of the least, one who they worship. It's the most important thing we give, is our worship. Bowing and acknowledging that he is indeed our Lord and our King. And then the gifts that we know so well, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Lots of interpretation has been put on them, and we don't know exactly whether they would have been received in this way or not. Gold for king, or maybe for humanity, according to one commentator, incense for a priest, incense for God, myrrh to signify his death or his mortality. But these were costly gifts. We look at them and think of them as symbolic. But I wonder how many of us, with the gifts that we've received for, for Christmas, have thought, Oh, well, that's a symbolic gift, Um, not quite a virtual gift, but a gift that is put on the shelf and that is looked at and admired or put away and maybe taken out every so often. For Mary and Joseph, I wonder whether these were gifts that they would want. Did they feel that they needed them or needed to hold on to them until Jesus had grown up? What did they see them as God's provision in looking after this child that they hadn't planned for and hadn't expected to be around so soon? We have the flight to Egypt straight after this. So I anticipate that they would have used the gold for money to pay for their expenses. Not quite sure what they'd have used the incense for, but myrrh as well as an ointment for death could also be used as a nappy cream, as cream to heal. So I would imagine that they would have been a practical use to these as well. And so for us, we come and we worship God. And we give to God out of our money, out of our resources, out of our service. And I wonder, are there gifts that we've been given by God that he's calling us to use afresh? Are there things that he has inspired us with or made us think about that we thought, well, I'd like to, but the time isn't right, 
or it's not going to work yet? Are there things that we are dreaming of where we can't see it coming to fruition yet, but we can put in place different parts of the picture that God wants to encourage us with, to say, there you are, that's another step along the way. This year, how are we going to use what God has given? How, what might he be asking of us? unexpectedly what journey might we go on where it's not just the end that we get to but it's the journey that matters as well this year how might we hear God will we expect him to speak or to nudge us in the ways he's always done or do we think he might have something fresh a new way to speak just as he did with the Magi. The star, then the dream. No doubt talking with each other to get to agree what they were going to do. And are we, can we be expectant, praying for God to speak to others that they might know him? And above all, let's commit ourselves again to worship God and to find new ways of doing so. For he is our king. He is king of the Jews, and he is our king. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for the journeys that we have each been on to find you, to be found by you. Would you re-envision us in praying for friends and family? Would you increase our expectation that you are at work in their lives? And would you show us and help us to offer ourselves to offer what you have given us in your service and the service of others. Help us to unpack what you have given and to grow in the gifts you have given us as a community as we come and say, we give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen going to stand again to worship. Behold our God.
Good morning. Let us behold our God and pray to him. Thank you, Father, for your interest in and care for humankind, wanting to be involved in our lives. The Magi, wise men, Gentiles from far away, followed your star, obeying your call. Help us to hear or see your call on our lives and to obey your guidance as they did. Help us to persevere as they did, even when obedience takes a long time or doesn't make sense to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Magi brought gold to your son, gold for a king, Jesus, king of kings, king of your kingdom. We ask you to grow and deepen your kingdom in each one of us, in this church, St. Mary's Church, in this parish, leading more and more people into your kingdom to find the joy of you in their lives that we know. Deepen your kingdom in this country, particularly deepening the integrity and respect and other attitudes that belong to you and your kingdom. Deepening these things in each one of us, but particularly in our leaders in government, national and local. We ask you to grow and deepen your kingdom in this world. We continue to cry out to you for Ukraine, for Israel, Palestine, for Sudan, for Yemen, Ethiopia, and so many more places torn apart by human war and greed and violence. Lord, you know what your kingdom looks like in each of those situations. And we cry out to you for them and for those who lead those nations and those armies and those who try to negotiate, try to bring some form of reconciliation, at least dialogue, in those situations. Lord, we need more of your kingdom so much. So Lord, please help us to see your guidance as individuals and as a church clearly and grant us the confidence and courage to obey that you may be able to use us more and more for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Magi also brought incense, used often in praying to Almighty God. Lord, we thank you for the gift of prayer and the blessing that you hear and answer prayer. Lord, you taught your disciples to pray. Teach us, your present-day disciples, to pray. Teach us to give you the time each day in prayer, time that is nowadays so precious and yet is your gift to us. Teach us to speak to you in prayer and to listen to you in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Magi brought myrrh to your son, myrrh for medicinal uses and to embalm bodies. Father, we pray for those who suffer today and thank you for medical skill and knowledge and the vast variety of medication there is that helps folks so much today. We pray for a just and speedy resolution to the junior doctor's dispute so that our wonderful National Health Service can function fully again. We pray too for the bereaved, 
those recently bereaved, and those who struggled with grief for a long time. Give them your strength and guide them through their pattern of living without their loved ones. Lord, grant to all those who suffer and all those who grieve your comfort and your amazing peace, we pray. A moment's quiet to bring to the Lord those known to us, maybe dear ones, maybe those we don't even know that well, but we know they need the Lord's help today. Lord, we bring all these people, those on our hearts that we haven't had time to mention, we bring them all to you and put them in your loving, powerful hands. Lord, work in each of their lives and in their families, we pray. Pour out your blessings, your comfort, your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us sum up the prayers of our hearts, spoken and unspoken, in the words that the Lord himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Anne. Notices. I hope everyone's got their, their notice sheet. We've got quite a few things going on. So we've got the men's breakfast, and we've got the pigeonholes, don't forget to check them. And also we need another team of people to do the refreshments after the 10.30 service. But there's lots of things in there to see as well. Um, also, it's the, it's the beginning of the month, not the end of the month, so I've wished the month away already. And we come to a time, if we can just stop recording, please. And does that... Happy birthday. Um, just to say, we've got some extras of the thought for the days. If you'd like one, please take them. My, um, my friend knows that I like them here. Said she got some spares, so I said yes, please. Um, you'll also see at the back, we've now got a collect tin um, where you can do contactless. It's very simple to use. If you, I know many give in other ways, but that's there just to let you know. And um, we've got the first of our, what's going to be a monthly prayer um, meeting um, tonight, about half six, half six. It'll be about an hour. The plan is that we will have a little bit of worship. Then there's a topic I want to think God wants us to pray about. We'll have time to listen to him for any words or ideas or thoughts, and then we'll break and we will pray around those different things. So that's to give you a flavor of what it will be like. It'd be lovely to see you, um, but I understand if you can't make it. Thank you. Please stand to sing our last song. Thank you for the Magi kings, wise men, their amazing journey and all the hazards that they would have had on the way. And Lord, in our journey with you, we dedicate our lives to you and we seek that you guide us in our life's journey with you.
Dear Lord, oh, please be seated. Dear Lord, we thank you for these gifts, these gifts that may change lives, these gifts that may open doors. Lord, we thank you for the gifts in here, gifts in here and those given in other ways. Lord, we just thank you that we're able to do this and we're able to serve you through your life. Amen. We come to the time of our blessing. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Thick your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Then God of peace will be with you. So let us go in peace and love one another and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, that's helped to prepare this service. Beautiful singing. Thank you. You know what? Sometimes I think the Lord has a, a game with me because I can never remember names when I look at people. <laughs> so my New Year's resolution is to try and remember these things. So, but thank you, everyone. I believe there's tea and coffees afterwards. Go out and love the Lord and rejoice the fact that he loves us and we love him. Amen.